Let's start with some news of the day. We were watching the prime minister earlier and he was talking about this new program to top up uh, low income wages. And he said it's gonna be up to the provinces. So minister, who's getting a, a wage top up here in Ontario? Well, you know, uh, working with the federal government, we announced, um, I think it was about a week and a half ago, uh, the people who we are, are planning to provide that wage top up for, and, and very much in collaboration with, with what the Prime Minister talked about today. So um, we were focusing on the frontline uh, workers, uh, particularly in the health sector, in the long-term care and retirement sector. Um, so some of the sectors that have been hardest hit and hardest at work. Um, and, uh, and so that, uh, you know, we do appreciate the working ability to work with the federal government on that and their flexibility in terms of letting each province look to you know where the biggest uh, need is uh, to keep uh, to keep all the systems running now when we, you know we're counting so much on those frontline employees. So a janitor or a grocery store worker they won't be receiving any any top up then. Yeah, not not at this stage. Although people working uh, doing cleaning and other things inside some of our long term care facilities uh, would be included. So again, focusing on the areas of, of of biggest need right now. Of course, there's so many people who are making a difference right now, but we had to put our focus in that in that space. Sure, I don't want to harp on this too much, but I did ask the premier the other week. I just want to get your quick take on it, as far as you know what we've realized in the past eight weeks about low income workers, how important they are. If that changes our thinking about the minimum wage policy. Do you think you, you, you'd change your philosophy on that from what it was previous, Minister? You know, I, I think we're all going to uh, get through this with a whole lot of different insights, uh, to your point, about, about uh, the vital role that people play. Uh, from, from the point of view of, of our government, of course, one of the reasons that um, we provided the lift tax credit was to provide a benefit for those minimum wage workers um, and to not put additional pressure on employers. One of the challenges right now, as you well know, are small businesses, uh, many of whom are the people who employ minimum wage workers, and any minimum wage increase would put another expense on them. So we'll need to always be looking at all the policy options, but that's why we took it on the government's uh, tab, as it were, uh, with, with our tax credit, so that uh, basically the people working on a minimum wage wouldn't be paying tax anymore, uh, as opposed to having employers pay more, at, which at this stage would be very difficult for many of them. Sure. Um, this is now planned for, for businesses that have a, a, a door to the street to open on Monday. Do you think this is premature in, in any ways? Because, you know, there's going to be some close contact in the stores. We've heard some employees who are concerned about it. You know, the situation here in downtown Toronto could get a little bit tightly packed. In China, it took them 10 weeks before they did anything like this. For us, that would be about June 1st. Do you think this is premature, Minister? No, I think we're taking a very measured approach. We we launched a framework last week that said we would roll out gradually uh, according to the best advice from our public health officials. Uh, this is something that we're doing in, in alignment with those officials. Obviously, and as the Premier has said, we have different situations in different parts of the province. That's one of the reasons that he spoke to Mayor Tory about, about how we would proceed here. And I think uh, the Mayor has been clear that you know they will be looking at, at what's required in a more dense urban setting. I mean, could say the same thing about Ottawa, denser urban setting, but um, but no, we've we've learned. You know, we've been learning all the law, all the way through. Um, you know, we had what we've learned through the LCBO, for example. What we learned from the retailers that have been that have been open, and we've shared all that through our Minister of Labor and Labor guidelines. There's 14 separate guidances that come with that for the curbside pickup, and 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 you know we're hopeful. We're all going to be watching, uh, but we'll, so we're hopeful. Mindsets that change, I think, when you do that. Maybe you're you're not as conscious as we were before when that happens. That's not a concern you know we're not as conscious of you know of of uh, keeping your your distance maybe you know you're you're more apt to go out when you see this sort of policy is that a well you know it's curbside pickup which we've been doing for hardware and other things already so so that has limitations uh, but you know we're all i mean everybody has done so well so far in terms of living within these guidelines we're all going to have to keep our keep on our mind that this virus still exists um, we want to keep being able to open up the economy more we're only going to be able to do that if these health preconditions are in place so it's up to all of us to stay responsible about that good stuff uh we got some questions from our listeners i you were kind enough to talk to us so we put the all call out i I, a pastor reached out to us and he said, please, Richard, ask the minister when my church can reopen. When are churches going to reopen? This, 
Yeah, it's a great question. I had this uh, conversation with uh, several pastors in Ajax just this, this weekend. It's amazing, first of all, what many churches have done uh, in terms of using digital outreach and, and other Zoom uh, as ways to, to do their services. But, but again, we are following the best health uh, guidance and, and gatherings, large gatherings of people uh, for the time being aren't things that, that our science and our health experts say are possible. So, so you know, continued patience uh, for our faith leaders. What they do is very important. I know so many of them are administering to their congregation congregations in different ways now. And, uh, and again, we all look forward to being able to get back to, uh, to those kinds of gatherings. But, so but no exact date for the, for, the minister, for the minister, no exact date? No, uh, absolutely not. No, okay. it'll, we've talked about those phases. So, yeah. so it'll, it'll be all part of the guidance we get on the basis of the best health and science. Uh, you may give me the same answer here, but we got, heard some reports that uh, restaurants will be opening on June 1st. Is that correct, Minister? Uh, we've certainly made no announcement like that. Uh, and again, we, what we'll be doing is opening in phases that reflect what the best health and science says. So, so there's no plan so for rest restaurants to open on June 1st? I uh, said so we'll, we'll announce our plans and we have them. I'm not sure where that one came from, but we'll announce our plans and make sure it's clearly. And what we have done, though, which I would say to restaurant owners, uh, in addition to operating the way it can now, is look to the, the guidelines that the Ministry of Labor has put out so they can see the sorts of things to get prepared uh, when and if that's uh, possible, but, but not, not in the, you know, something that we'll announce when we announce it. Okay. Um, my hair's getting a bit shaggy. When can I get a haircut, Minister? <laughs> I, I was going to say something, Richard, but uh, <laughs> they, uh, the, 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 uh, again, this, these are all great questions. And listen, we, I wish that I could say to your listeners, you know, this is what the, the plan is for the date for when we can do these things. We will do that as the health advice allows us. And remember, we're, we're, we're seeing the cases flatten out. We're maintaining the capacity in the hospitals. We're getting better at testing. We're getting better at tracking. These are the things that the government's doing now to make sure that we can do it as soon as possible. In the meantime, uh, you, you know, I, there are some great uh, internet haircutting options that uh, I'm I, I just saying. Only, only if you do it with me, Minister. Uh, Minister, <laughs> is, would you say, is this the biggest economic disaster to ever befall Ontario? Um, I would say in my lifetime, this is the most difficult economy that I've seen. And, uh, and, and uh, that is a result of an underlying health uh, issue that is global. And so it is not just about what's happening in Ontario. People compare this to SARS and there are some comparisons, but when that happened, and I was around then as well, um, what happened was Ontario and Hong Kong emerged into a global economy that was functioning fairly well. Uh, we don't have to watch you know, too much news down south to see that there's lots of places that aren't doing well. So we are, we are definitely in the most challenging times that I remember, and, um, and I think we're going to come through it, but, but we need to understand this isn't just about what's happening in Ontario or Canada. This is happening around the world. Is Ontario in a recession right now? You know, the recession is something you only can really judge in the rearview mirror, uh, and so uh, in terms of two two consecutive quarters. But there's no question we're seeing a very very uh, challenging economy. Uh, we hear about seven and a half million individuals that are taking advantage of the federal income assistance program. I mean, that's simply unheard of. Because so, the C so the C D Howe Institute, is, as you're aware, has said we're in a recession, but you, you won't then, uh, you won't say so. They used a non-traditional view of, of a reset, and they admitted that calculating employment and other things. But but we're 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 focused on you know we're heading for one though, right? We're heading is, for one. This is very difficult times, and and we need to uh, you know we'll know we'll know after two quarters whether that's the case. But we aren't waiting, as you know. We put together a seventeen billion dollar package to to support the economy, um, and we're going to continue to do what's necessary to help people and okay. help through the health crisis. What's Ontario's GDP going to look like? What's the projection here for the rest of the year? Well, you know, we put out new projections uh, with our with our economic statement, as as you know. Yeah. Uh, the other governments really went with their old budgets. We put out a new one. Now that was at the end of March. I have to say, um, things have gotten more difficult since then. That's why I so, ask. Are those going to be revised? You know, in August we'll come out, and as you know, quarterly I come out and report uh, on what things are. So the next reporting is in August. You know, we're going to see job numbers uh, tomorrow that will come out from Statistics Canada. Uh, I have not seen them certainly, but I'm quite sure that they will be very, very bad uh, from a Canadian perspective and an Ontario perspective. All of that will feed into the the challenging economic situation we find us in. Um, it's why we're trying to do as much as we can to to help Ontarians through this. Uh, there's going to be a big drop off, we know, in sales tax and in income tax, uh, you know, two of the province's sort of biggest uh, sources of revenue. How are we going to make up all that lost money? 
Well, traditionally, and again, what we, we also deferred, and, and you, you know this, we deferred a number of taxes like the employer health tax, we deferred WSIB premiums, uh, allowed the uh, cities and towns to defer property taxes. So we've, we've deferred a number of taxes so that people have more cash flow now, but again, those, those will come back uh, you know, people will then be expected to make them up and that will be a How are they going to do, are people going to have all this money around for five months back taxes though? Well, we, we don't know because we don't know where the economy will be, but, but you asked the right question uh, in the first instance was, you know, when those taxes uh, are not collected because there isn't sales, uh, because there isn't income. Um, it's one of the reasons we put a historic level of prudence into the budget. So we put a two and a half billion dollar reserve, much bigger than has ever been put there before, um, to, to account for the fact that, that there's the potential for that revenue shortfall. But you know, we, we will keep being transparent, let people know where we're at, um, try to do the things that we can to get the economy back on its feet. First and foremost to that is tackling this, this health issue, getting people in the economy back to work when it's and safe. Another question we got, I mean, Ontario is the most indebted sub-sovereign nation. How are we going to pay for all this was a big question. I mean, yeah. well, it, and, and this is now, I guess, eight weeks ago, we were on track to deliver a budget that would have taken our, our deficit down substantially. We were going towards balancing a budget, as you know, by 22, 23. And now we've projected over a 20 billion dollar deficit. So, so these are, um, these are definitely challenging times, but, but you know, Richard, the, the reason that we were being prudent with our spending for the first, you know, two, uh, almost two years was so we'd have the dollars to be able to spend at a time like this. We will have to account for it later on, but right now we're focused on health and focused on getting the economy. Are, are we going to have to hike taxes, do you think, Minister? Is a tax hike necessary here at some point? You know, we're going to need to get through this first challenge and see see what needs to be done uh, and see what the economy is looking like before before we make any decisions about about how to address that uh, that I, deficit. I think the plan right was now, for right a, now, a tax cut in the in the in the last half year mandate. Is that off the table now? Middle class tax cut. Again, we're going to make sure that we we look at all the options that that are on the table. But but I think we're going to do it from the context of where the economy is. It's one of the reasons why I only delivered a one year financial plan. We'll have a budget by November fifteenth, which by that time we hope we'll have much more clarity. That'll also give that multi year outlook in terms of what the debt looks like in the future and deficit, um, and what other other fiscal tools uh, we we, we do choose to use. But but right now it's making sure that. We're taking care of the health and safety of Ontarians, getting the economy back uh, as safely as we can. How much longer can we last under this current scenario, economically speaking? Uh, well, you know, it's a, a, a you know open-ended question. I, I think people, the resilience of, of people here is, is quite uh, incredible. So I think I think people people are adapting and doing a great job of, of, of working as best they can under this circumstance. But you know, it is uh, it is definitely a challenge, not just not just economically, but just personally for people. Uh, you know, not being able to get out, uh, missing family, missing friends. It's Mother's Day this weekend. Uh, we are we are able to open up the garden centers on uh, on Friday. So I hope everybody that can will make sure they get some a pot, potted plant or some flowers for mom. Yes. Uh, but but I think people people appreciate that until you address the health issue, and that's what we're doing, um, everything else needs to follow behind that. Uh, the most common question we got uh, for you, Minister, four or five people said, um, asked about the cut to health care. I know you haven't cut health care, but it was reduced below the rate of inflation, which I think most people will agree is a cut. Any regret about that? I know you weren't finance minister at the time. You were in the cabinet, though. Any regret about that? Well, as you pointed out, uh, we didn't cut health care. In fact, health care grew uh, more to a higher level than it had grown in the history of the province. And now subsequently, uh, again, uh, obviously partly in light of, of this health situation, but also just because of our investments, um, is growing yet again to record levels. So, so we'll make sure the necessary investments are there. And, uh, and I think our health system and our health professionals have you know, really responded admirably um, in terms of, of the challenges that they faced. I mean, we're not out of this yet, but, but so far, we don't have to look too far south of the border to see, see how it can be different if, if we didn't have the system. So you're not going to say that was a mistake to not fund it above the rate of inflation? Um, I'm going to say that we increased healthcare spending to the highest level in the history of the province, and, and we've done that again this year. Minister, with many out of work, I mean, you're talking about the job numbers tomorrow. We all know they're not going to look good. Uh, are you in favor of this basic human income? We've seen more people across the political spectrum start to maybe start to think about this. What do you think about a basic human income? 
Um, listen, I, we don't think that it's the best policy option. Uh, the work that was done preliminarily on the pilot project uh, that the previous government put in place uh, indicated indicated that. Uh, so, you know, we have we've again done other things to make sure that we support individuals uh, that are at the lower end of the income spectrum, whether it was our care uh, child care credit or the lift tax credit. I mean, we really do want to obviously create a situation where people can have a job uh, that are able to work and that that's the best opportunity. Um, we're in a very unique situation today, of course, in terms of the federal government's uh, program, and I think that's what's opened up this conversation. Um, but we've also seen some of the challenges and dislocation that that's caused in terms of in terms of, of the overall economy. So, uh, you know, we'll, 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 you know, keep keep with the approach, which is that we want people and want the economy to come back so people can have a job. That's what people want. They don't they don't want the government subsidizing. Them. Just around this out, do you foresee issue uh, issuing COVID bonds? You know, it's an option that uh, we've certainly heard about in some other uh, in some other jurisdictions. Uh, right now, of course, we we're, were able to raise money pretty effectively with our with our Ontario bonds. Um, but again, we're going to keep looking around the world for. And this is an idea that I heard about first. I'm not sure where you did, but out of Europe, they're talking about about this. Um, you know, we're going to look to uh, to whatever whatever options make sense. Keep all those policy options open. Would you raise the HST? As I said, we uh, you know we we. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I got to ask. I apologize. It was a question we got, actually. Will, will we raise the HST? I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, I've got to ask before I let you go, because someone asked to golf courses. The golfers are going crazy tweeting me. Any word on what we when golf courses, when people can go play nine holes? Well, you know, what we did uh, allow is for the golf courses to start to prepare. Uh, but, and I know it's starting to be a boring answer, but I think everybody can appreciate this. We have to move in a really systematic way. All of the people who ask those questions saying, when can I open my church? When can I open my restaurant? When can I open my golf course? We'll be very clear to let you know right now, the thing to do to get prepared is to look at what the Ministry of Labor has put out in terms of the guidelines so you can do it safely. And of course, we all want to get, uh, get back outside, uh, get back to our church, get back to our, our favorite store, and we'll be able to do that um, as soon as we can safely, safely do that. Very last question. The renters always are, are, are talking to me. Uh, you know, the rent downtown, the average rent is like 2800 I think. You know, the federal supplement is only $2,000 a month. Many people weren't able to make May. We're going to have June coming up before you know it. Is there anything the province can do to step in and help the renters here, especially in downtown Toronto, Minister? Um, well, and, and again, as you know, uh, we've uh, put a prohibition on evictions, which is something that the provincial government did very quickly. Um, and the premier has reached out, as has Minister Clark, to the federal government um, to look to them uh, to say, you know, what kind of a program could we do with them jointly? But uh, again, as as we always say in the in the uh, in the media updates, you know, if you can pay your rent, it's important that you do. And, and we encourage people to do that. Uh, but the, the Premier has reached out and suggested to the Prime Minister that this would be another area where the province and the federal government could cooperate. Minister, thanks for doing this. This is great, because I miss question period. We had our own little mini question period. I miss uh, you too. It's, it's, I, uh, and, and we're going to have question period next week. So, so Is, is that going to be in person or is that a virtual one? I believe it's in person, but don't don't quote me on that. I'll check with the house leader. But I think I think starting on Tuesday. So uh, so we'll double check that. But I'm pretty sure, sure. Uh, we'll be back in the legislature, appropriately physically distanced. Of yes, very fun. Uh, Rob, thanks so much. I really appreciate the wide ranging chat. It's uh, it's great to uh, see you virtually, my friend. <laughs>